In recent years, there's been a lot of uh, discoveries and insights about how to think effectively on the golf course. And I'm not just talking about sports psychology, you know, that's been around forever, but I'm talking about brain physiology. Really, how do you most effectively use your, your brain when, uh, when playing golf? You know, Tiger Woods says, I don't make it happen, I let it happen. Or uh, when he says about a particular play, he says, I could tell you about the lie and the wind and what I was attempting to do, the club I selected, what I was attempting to do with the ball, and I could tell you about the results. But I can't tell you about the uh, swing. I have no remem- memory of it even occurring. It, it's, you know, I wasn't there. I could tell you about the before and after, but I can't tell you about the swing. These are two examples of how Tiger Woods uses his brain so, so effectively. Uh, in this video, I'm, I'm just going to try to explain to you, give you a, just a little bit of insight. So it's just a quick video, but I think you'll know, you know what, I'm, what I'm referring to. Uh, about 10 years ago, uh, Trackman hit the scene, and he uh, became very popular with mainstream golf instructors. And uh, suddenly, you, you'll hear golf instructors giving lessons, and they'll be talking a lot about the, uh, the D-plane or uh, spin axis or angles of descent, or smash factors, uh, uh, horizontal spin axis, all this stuff, uh, they're all res- referring to the physics of, of impact and the physics of uh, a ball flight. And the typical golfer, uh, you know, I, I, I was, I'm being a golf nerd, I was all into this, I, I thought it was great, I learned all I could, but the typical golfer could care less. He didn't care about impact physics or physics of ball flight. He just wanted to get better. He just wanted to break 100 or break 90 or break 85. He just wanted to improve. He could care less about all these, all this uh, 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 jargon. And the same thing, uh, the same thing holds true when you talk about uh, brain physiology. You know, the uh, the typical golfer doesn't want to hear about the basal ganglia or the cerebellum or the prefrontal cortex or all, all hippocampus, all all this kind of stuff. He does he doesn't care about this stuff. Uh, but he he would like to think more effectively, though. He understands that if he thought better on the golf course, he would improve. So he is he is uh, open to that, and uh, you know even, even today there's there's debate over uh, uh, there's still debate over uh, uh, brain physiology. There's no exact it's not exact of what the different parts of the brain uh, to do. There's still there's still arguments, but uh, the people that that influenced me the most. Uh, in the last, uh, you know, five, six years about uh, brain physiology would be, uh, the first would be uh, Stephen Yellen. Uh, Yellen wrote two uh, really great books, I think. He wrote The, uh, the Seven Secrets of World Class Athletes, and uh, he wrote uh, the, the, the Fluid Motion Factor. And uh, he, he instructs at Iowa, but he also works in Florida with uh, David Ledbetter. And, uh, he, you know, he's really done great stuff on, on brain physiology and effective thinking. Also, uh, Dr. Jill Bolte-Taylor uh, in, in the book, uh, My Stroke of Insight. Um, she's done a lot of uh, uh, YouTube videos and really, really great stuff. Uh, she had a, a massive stroke in her 30s. And uh, she was a brain anatomist at a Harvard and had a massive stroke and lost, really lost the whole left side of her brain. And, and she's only right brain for, for a long time. And, and really had to put the left brain back slowly over eight years to fully recover. So uh, her recovery process is amazing. And, and I learned a lot uh, from her about how, how the brain works. I also learned a lot from uh, Henry Bolton. Henry was one of the uh, uh, co-founders of the uh, of Focus Band. Focus Band is still very popular around the world. It really gained a lot of no- notoriety with uh, Jason Day when Jason Day became the uh, number one ranked player in the world. He used this uh, a-, a lot. And uh, this is it's a band you put it around your head. It, it uh, measures the electrical impulses. It can tell if you're thinking with your left brain or your, your right brain. I, I, I use it with my students, trying to get them to be more right brain when they swing the golf club. We'll, I'll talk about this more in, uh, in, in other videos. Now applying this stuff, these 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 I've learned the most from these three people, and but I, but when I apply it to the golf, I learned the most by uh, P. A. Nielsen and and Lynn Marriott, who, who I've, I refer to a lot. Great golf instructors. This is their latest book, uh, uh, Be a Player. They they taught Anika uh, Sorenstam, and they they are they are the top of the uh, business I think as, as far as golf instruction goes. And they talk a lot about the brain physiology and. Uh, 
improper thinking on the on the golf course. So let's talk about this uh, little quick insight here about what we're talking about about uh, thinking effectively. You you hear a lot about this right brain left brain. You hear uh, all the time. The right brain over here is uh, is is really related to the body, to the feelings, to the uh, to the intuition. You know, when I talk about the uh, uh, the basal ganglia or the cerebellum, I'm talking about or the motor system, the fast muscle twitches. They're talking about the uh, the, the right brain. You know, Henry Bolton says that uh, this part of your brain can do about 11 million instructions per second. It's extremely extremely powerful. On the uh, the left brain. You're thinking more of uh, analytical mind, your ego, the voice in your head, the thinking mind. It's a smaller part of the brain. And you generally talk about the left prefrontal cortex when people talk about left brain thinking, analytical thinking. And it, it can do about 40 uh, instructions per second as opposed to uh, 11 million. So obviously, this is where you want to do when you're swinging a golf club. You want to be utilizing the, uh, you want to be utilizing the, the right side of your brain. Now if I, uh, let's just say I, my mouth is getting a little dry and I, and I want to uh, get a, grab some water, I, I'll, I'll reach over here and I'll, I'll get the bottle of water and still I'll take the top off while I'm talking to you. I'll drink the water, I feel a little better, and I'll put the top back on and I'll put it back and I'll continue to talk to you without moving a, a beat. Now that, that is uh, what's called fluid, fluid authentic movement. I had a signal. The signal popped into my head. My mouth is getting dry. I need some water. The signal went to my motor system in the brain, the right brain, and it went down into my body. I grabbed the bottle, took out the water, took out the lid, have a drink, put the lid back on, and put the water back. I'm fine. It all happened just fluid, without any, without any thought. You know, if if I'm uh, if I'm eating a steak. And I'm talking to you. We're at a restaurant. I'm eating a steak, and I decide I want another bite of steak. You know, I, I'll pick up the fork. I'll pick up the knife. I'll, I'll cut another uh, part of the steak while I'm talking to you. You know, I'll put the knife down, take the fork, and I'll, I'll eat. I'll put the steak, in my, the piece of steak, in my mouth, and it's all done uh, just fluid. I have the thought. It goes to the motor system. It goes down to my uh, my. My hands and arms, fast twitch muscles, make it make it all happen, and uh, and and I do it uh, without any thought. Now, you know, the body never forgets how to do it. I do it, in in the cerebellum, the small part of the brain, is what orchestrates the little fast twitching muscles that that makes it happen. Now, uh, uh, a while back, you know, when I was when I was for years and years and years, I wore a tie to work every single day. Every single day, I got up and I had to put on a tie to go to work. And then about uh, more than 25 years ago, I, I stopped doing that. I got in a different field, and I never wanted to wear a tie again. I got rid of all my ties. And uh, recently, I, I, had, uh, I had to go to a, a formal event, and I had to wear a tie. So uh, I had to go buy one. So I went, bought the tie, I brought it home, and I'm thinking about the event. And I go home, and I get dressed, and put my shirt on, I put the tie, and I tie the tie knot. And then I think, after I'm done, you know, it was a perfect knot. And I haven't tied a tie in 25 years. You know, it's not that difficult, but still, there's a, there's a bunch of different moments to get the, the bottom right, and you have to flip it around a few times, and go underneath, and take it out, and stick it down through, and tighten, and make it perfect. There's still a lot of movements in there. Your fingers are doing all these different things. And I did it without even thinking. My mind was somewhere else. You know, how's that possible? It's possible because your, your, uh, your body never forgets. These, these, uh, these sequence of movements, this algorithm, uh, it, it's in your uh, basal ganglia, and, and it simply doesn't ever forget. And, uh, and then it's, it's orchestrated on a particular day by the cerebellum, the small part, they called the small brain, is when it just orchestrates this, the tiny little muscles, the fast twitching muscles that, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that makes it happen. So, now the obvious question is, with this little example here, you say, well, Phil, if that's so true, if your body never forgets, you know, how come my swing always breaks down on the golf course? I mean, that's a great question, and that's really the essence of this whole thing. The truth of the matter is, your swing never breaks down. Your body never forgets how to hit a golf ball. What breaks down is your ability to access what you already know. Uh, this is key. This is so important. 
let's say, for example, you go to the, let's say you're hitting drives and you're warming up before a round and you're hitting drives good. You're looking at out there at the target and you're just hitting drive after drive is fine. Now you go to the first tee. Okay, you're teeing up, you're in the first tee, you tee it up, you get behind the ball, and what happens? You see the OB all the way down the left side of the fairway. I mean, you won't think about that on the golf course. But now you see the OB going all the way down to the, uh, the left side of the fairway. This is the prefrontal cortex. This is, the, uh, this is your, your analytical mind, the voice in your head. This is your ego here. It's going, it's going online now. It's not anymore. It's not about A to B. There's my target, like on the range, A to B. Now all of a sudden, I see OB over there. Then all of a sudden, your ego pops in. You look around and say, well, you know, I got my threesome with me, and I got the foursome behind me. They're with me, and the starter, he's with me, and they're all looking at me, and I don't want to embarrass myself. So now, again, the prefrontal cortex starts getting activated. Thoughts start coming through your mind. And what happens, the prefrontal cortex comes up and, and intervenes through this... Uh, uh, through the signal. The signal is no longer pure. It's no longer like on the range. Just hit the ball, there's a target, hit the ball to the target. It's not that anymore. Suddenly it's don't go OB, don't embarrass myself. Now it's uh, Stephen Yellen, who, who I learned all, all this stuff from. You know, he calls it now, it's now you're rolling dice. Now you're in Vegas. Who knows what's going to happen? Because it's no longer pure. You've interfered it with the, interfered it with, it with the uh, 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 prefrontal cortex. And uh, see, that's that is the uh, the essence of, uh, of 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 what we're talking about here. You know, you've got to get this out of out of the equation. When you're when you're, I tell you, when you're swinging, when you're swinging a golf bu a club. Let's say you did. Let's say you you've got this and you didn't have this problem in mind. You got to the first tee and uh, you teed it up, and you you don't have, you're oblivious to everything else. You're A to B, you see the ball down there, you get set up, you swing, and then halfway down you think, okay, start the, uh, uh, start the downswing, move my hips towards the target. Now again, this guy's come online. It overrides the cerebellum. The cerebellum that was controlling, orchestrating all the movements perfectly, now comes to a stop because uh, the prefrontal cortex overrides the cerebellum. And again, now it's Vegas again. Who knows what's gonna happen? You can't think when you're, when you're swinging. You know, it wasn't long ago that I went to visit my grandkids, and they wanted to ride around the hills around their house. So I hopped on a bike, and I went riding. We went up and down the hills, and uh, uh, we had a good afternoon. And uh, it was just, I had the idea, here's my signal, ride the bike. I jumped on the bike, went to my body, got on the bike, got on, steered, and drove around the hills. Now, what would have happened if I got on the bike and drove down the uh, street and all of a sudden I had the, this guy came online, the prefrontal cortex, and said, oh, well, hold on, Phil. You don't want to fall on your face. You're not getting any uh, younger, Phil. If you miss this turn, you fall down, you break your hip. It's going to take a long time. You're not going to be able to play golf for six months. You, do, you better lean left. You better lean right. If I thought this, if this guy came online, I thought that I probably would have fallen down five times because it wouldn't be pure. My body wouldn't be able to just do. My body is a lot smarter. So when we say your body is a lot smarter uh, than we are, you know, we, and this is what we, when we say we're getting in our way. This is how we get in our way. We're getting in our way with thoughts. You know, we're, we're no longer uh, thinking effectively anymore. Uh, and it's, it's what Tiger Woods says. When Tiger Woods says, uh, again, when Tiger Woods says, I don't make it happen, I let it happen. You know, I don't make it happen over here. I let it happen. Now, even Tiger Woods is human. I remember a few years ago in the Open, uh, he was warming up, and his first tee ball was going to be a stinger. He's going to hit one of these low three irons down the fairway, and he's warming up on the, on the range, and he's hitting. As he ends his uh, practice session, he, he's just nailing these things like laser beams. Then he gets up in the first tee, and he's kind of apprehensive. He gets up there like himself, but then he backs off a little bit, and I was wondering what's going on here. And then he gets up there, and then he blocks it right into the weeds. And then uh, after, the, uh, after the round, they asked him, what happened to the, the tee shot? Well, what happened to you? And he said, I couldn't, he says this a lot when he misses it. I couldn't stay committed to the play. Uh, he said, I got over the first tee. I looked down the fairway, and the fairway was rock hard. I, I could see it. And I could see a pot bunker over there to the left. 
that suddenly I thought would might come into play. I thought if I turn this over, I can hit it in that bunker. And that is, that's a deep, tough bunker. And he couldn't make a par from there. Very unlikely. He could make bogey or double very easy. And he couldn't get it out of his mind. He couldn't get that bunker out of his mind. What happened? He, he, he went to the tee with the idea, hit that stinger three iron, and suddenly fear came in. Suddenly he saw something. The, the, the prefrontal cortex got online and uh, blocked this pure signal and uh, got a little fear came into him. And then he hoiled on, blocked it into the weeds. Even Tiger Woods is, is human. Every once in a while, it, it can happen to, to him as well. You know, it happens to uh, 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 the rest of us all, all the time. And now, this is, and this is why, uh, when I talk about um, P. E. Nielsen and, and um, Lynn Marriott, this is why they talk so much about the, uh, the play box and the think box. You know, they want their uh, students to go behind the ball and behind the ball, they think about the play they're going to do, meaning they're using the prefrontal cortex, the left brain. They're looking at the wind, they're selecting their club, they're looking at other variables. They think about what they want to do. But once they step into what they call the play box, they move over that decision line, this has got to go. No more thought. Now they're, gonna, now they're just playing with their body. They're just letting their body hit it. You know, they'll, they'll say they went maybe 20 seconds in the, uh, in the think box and five seconds uh, over here to hit the ball. They want to just hit the ball, hold, the, hold their intent, get the signal, A to B, and just let it happen quick, uh, you know, a, a, as quick as possible. Uh, and then again, again, that's what Tiger Woods was saying when he says, I don't make it happen. I mean, I don't try to force it in P1, P2, P3, move the hips, because that's impossible. This part of the brain doesn't move muscles effectively at all. It doesn't even communicate with the part of the brain does effectively very well. It just throws you off balance. If your swing is off balance, you know you are thinking too much. You just gotta, you just have to learn to use this in the think box, and when you're ready to hit, you gotta swing without thinking. So kind of in a nut, just, uh, just a quick overview. It's a, it's a complex uh, uh, topic. You know, I talk a lot about it with my students. I think it's just the, the, the essence of, uh, uh, of, of great golf is learning how to uh, think effectively.